All right, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Denise Gibson. I am the program director here at Town Square University Parkway. Okay. And so I'm just gonna get this started. Those who come in will be a little bit late. But we have a presenter for Gray Matters today. Um, her name is Agnes Lynch. She is a nurse practitioner. And you will learn more about the Fredison protocol and how it focuses on uncovering the root causes of cognitive decline. Once you identify the various root causes, you can then begin to fix them to prevent cognitive decline. This new approach is cognitive and <coughs> to cognitive decline offers an evidence-based <coughs> comprehensive solution. So I just want to introduce Agnes Lynch. Oh, one, one more thing. All questions um, are to be done in the library. So when she's finished speaking, she's going to then go into the library so we can clear out. So if you have questions for her, she'll be taking questions in the library, which is right next door, right? Um, so we can set up for the next presenter. Thank you, Adam. All right. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Agnes. Uh, I'm one of the nurse practitioners of Gray Matters. Um, today, I will be presenting to you how we at Gray Matters Thank you. offer solutions in preventing and reversing cognitive decline. This will be our topics for today. We're going to be talking about brain fitness, a little bit of anatomy and physiology of the brain, which I, I bet you've heard already outside, uh, some physiology there. Um, definition of dementia, who is Dr. Dale Bredesen? What is the Bredesen protocol? The APP or the amyloid precursor protein, the many causes of dementia, and what can we do to prevent and even reverse dementia? Brain fitness. In this slide, you will see this dark curve line. This illustrates to us the normal development and decline of a, a human brain. If you see this area here, this uh, around 70 to 75 years old, majority of this population is already seeking medical help whether it is for physical or cognitive decline. But if you look at this dark line here, around this area here, this is like somewhere 40 to 45 years old, this is actually the most important stage of this curve. If we can address the cognitive, cognitive decline at this stage, we can delay the onset of uh, dementia. So what I'm trying to say here is the earlier or the sooner we address the cognitive decline, the better the outcome is. Human brain. Dementia can happen to any parts of, oh, sorry. Dementia can happen to any parts of this brain. But if we're talking about Alzheimer's disease, the most common part of the brain that's getting affected is the temporal lobe, this side here. This is where the memory is, specifically when we talk about hippocampus. But again, as I said, dementia can happen to any parts of the brain. If it happens to where the parietal area is, this is where the sensory perception, the sense of taste, sense of smell, which you usually see when you have somebody that has Alzheimer's disease, their sense of smell, their sense of taste is diminished or actually they're gone. Also in this parietal side here, this is where the this, uh, understanding spoken and written languages can happen. Also, dementia can happen also in the frontal area right here. This is our executive function. That's where our intelligence our judgment, our reasoning is happening. But dementia can also happen, this part here, we call this cerebellum. This is the two bulbs behind our, our head. If that happens, our walking is actually affected because this cerebellum is responsible for the balance and coordination. If the dementia happens to the brain stem, this is just above your spinal cord, 
your uh, autom automatic functions of your brain, of your body, I should say, is affected. Because this brain stem is responsible for breathing, digestion, uh, heart beating, temperature control, your blood pressure control can happen also here, and your alertness. So what is dementia? If we have to define dementia using a Webster's Dictionary, it's a chronic or persistent disorder of the mental processes caused by brain disease or injury and is marked by memory disorders, personality changes, and impaired reasoning. But we all agree that when we talk about dementia, there's always this memory loss that is affecting our daily lives, affecting our independence. There are several types of dementia. Alzheimer's, uh, Alzheimer's dementia is the most common one. This is the type of dementia that Dr. Bredesen have researched for many years. This, we have also the vascular dementia. This is usually related to the circulation, oxygenation to your brain. So this is associated with those stroke, atherosclerosis, or with, uh, the, that's the formation of those plaques in our um, blood vessels. We also have the Lewy body and the Parkinson's dementia. These two dementias are different types of dementias, but they're uh, mostly, the Lewy body and the Parkinson, they're usually caused by exposures to chemicals. One of the most common that I've seen a lot is the glyphosate, the Roundup. This is all Roundup, yeah. Uh, those, uh, the one with weed killer. This is also can be caused by lead, lead exposures, you know, and I've seen a lot also, those people that um, was exposed to uh, Agent Orange, they can cause also the, the Lewy body and Parkinson's dementia. And these two type of dementias, uh, they're usually manifested by staggering gait, or also the tremors. The distinguishing factor of these two, Lewy body dementia has more of the hallucination compared, compared to the Parkinson's dementia. I've heard a while ago that they also mentioned about the frontotemporal dementia. <coughs> frontotemporal dementia is one type of dementia that is less studied. <coughs> There's only few research about this. So unfortunately, we don't know much about the cause and the treatment for this type of dementia. This is one of those dementia that is, uh, the typical manifestation of this is, um, they, are, they have this socially inappropriate behaviors. I've seen, I, I bet you've seen that one. Or we have the mixed dementia, which could be either, either a combination of either types of this. And in fact, there was a big study years ago. The study was called the Memory and Aging Project. 94% um, of that, pro, uh, 94 of the participants were actually diagnosed of Alzheimer's disease. And during their autopsies, 54% of them was found to have a coexisting pathology. And the, one, and the most common coexisting pathology that they found was vascular disease. The second one was the Lewy body. What? Lewy body? What was the first one? Uh, vascular disease. Oh. All right, CDC. Everybody knows what CDC is. Center of Disease and Control. They are actually projecting that by 2050, there would be 13.8 millions of Americans that will have Alzheimer's disease. We are challenging this number. We would like this number to go down with the help of Dr. Bredesen's research. So who is Dr. Dale Bredesen? He graduated from California Institute of Technology, completed his medical degree from Duke University, currently, he is an adjunct professor of the University of California, San Francisco. 
He dedicated the past 30 years to finding the root causes and treatment of Alzheimer's disease. Those many years of research, he found this APP, as in uh, for amyloid precursor protein, this is the master switch of Alzheimer's disease. This is a sensor to many factors, including hormones, nutrients, infections, anything that we acquired in our body. So if this APP senses that your body has an optimal level of hormones, good levels of vitamins, you're not exposed to any infections, this APP is cut in one site, producing two peptides. So when your brain has these two peptides, it's a good thing. Your brain is doing the growth and maintenance mode. But if your this APP senses that your body has a hormonal imbalances, vitamin deficiencies, you're exposed to viruses, bacteria, all these toxins that surround us, this APP is cut in three sites, producing these four peptides, these four protein fragments, one of which is this amyloid beta protein. I'm sure you've heard about this. This is the focus of the pharmaceutical industry, the conventional medicine. But if you look at this one, there's more stories to it, right? This is not just the amyloid beta. But if your brain has this four peptides, your brain now is in a protective mode. I can discuss that later on, okay? But I just want to show you here the difference between a healthy brain and a brain with a severe Alzheimer's disease. This is usually seen during autopsies. All right, those many years of research of Dr. Bredesen, he found out, he identified the 36 contributing factors to Alzheimer's disease. This slide here illustrates to you that if your roof has 36 holes, you would want to patch all of them or else you're gonna get wet when it rains. But I'm not saying though that every individual that has a cognitive decline will have all these 36 contributing factors, all these causes. But if you know what are your causes, you would want to treat all of them. We will uh, be able to treat all those causes with the use of Bredesen protocol. This is actually the first book of Dr. Bredesen. This is a New York Times bestseller. In this book, he wrote, he identified those 36 causes of Alzheimer's disease. Um, he classified also those causes, he classified it to some subtypes. We have the inflammatory, also known as hot. Anything that's inflamed is hot. We have the glycotoxic, the sweet type. We have the trophic, this is a cold type. This, is, has, this has to do with those hormones and nutrients. We also have the toxic. This is the, the toxic things that surround us, you know, those chemicals, those uh, uh, heavy metals. There's also a trauma. We either it could be a physical trauma, that's a brain a traumatic brain injury, or an emotional trauma. We will be able to help you identify your so, your causes, your subtypes. If you go through our our the cognoscopy, which is our diagnostic tool. When you undergo the cognoscopy, we will be able to help identify your risk factors. And once we know what's your risk factors, we will ad, um, help you, I mean, we will address those with the use of Bredesen protocol. Bredesen protocol consists of diet, lifestyle modification, and supplements. So I've been talking to you about those causes. There's so many causes, as I said, there's 36 causes. 
The very first one I want to mention to you would be our gene. We have this what we call APOE4 gene. If you're a carrier of one APOE4 allele, you are at least 30% more at risk of developing Alzheimer's disease in co comparison to those that doesn't have this APOE4. But if you are a carrier of APOE44, which means one from your father, one from your mother, you are at least 50 to 90% uh, at risk of uh, developing Alzheimer's disease. Um, during this time that I work in neurology, most conventional neurologists, they don't test this, te this gene because they don't feel like they can do anything when they, when they found out that you are a carrier of APOE4. But for me, if I know that I'm a carrier of APOE4, I would do everything I can to stop the progression of Alzheimer's disease or cognitive decline. There's our other causes here, inflammatory, trophic, and toxic substances. Inflammatory, the most common uh, sources of inflammatory are those inflammatory food. These are what we call processed food, sugar, the good ones, right? Mm -hmm. Sugar, uh, gluten-containing food, alcohol, sorry, um, stress, and lack of sleep. There's actually so many other uh, causes also that can cause this uh, sources of inflammatory. Again, trophic, we're talking about here again the hormone imbalances. Whether we're talking about your thyroid hormones, sex hormones imbalances, that can also affect your cognitive decline. Also, we are talking here about vitamin deficiencies. Toxic substances, again, I, need, I really want to mention this to you because more and more people are still using this Roundup. This is really one of the major causes of cognitive decline. There's also this herbicides, pesticides, our cleaning products at home, and even the fluoride we put in our teeth that can cause also cognitive decline. <clears throat> diabetes, everybody knows that this is a big, a huge contributor to, di to Alzheimer's disease. Actually, they call now the Alzheimer's disease as a type three diabetes. There are several uh, sources of infections here too that can cause Alzheimer's. Even the, those simple cold sore in your mouth, on your lip, that is something to do with herpes virus. Lyme disease or tick bites. Even if you haven't been diagnosed with Lyme disease, but if you got those tick bites before, you, uh, you, you wanna be tested for this because this also causes cognitive decline. We have the oral microbiome. In our mouth, we have what we call this pathogen Porphomonas gingivalis. It's a very potent causative agent for cognitive decline. I'm sure everybody knows about H. pylori. Conventional medicine really likes to treat this one, H. pylori. Helicobacter pylori, that stays in our gut. And this is one of those pathogens in our gut that is difficult to eradicate. Heavy metal toxicity, this is another big one. Uh, aluminum, we can get that, that from our pots and pans at home. We can also get those aluminum from our deodorants. They contain aluminum. Arsenic, per research, the most common uh, sources of arsenic these days is the rice and the root crops. They have, it's all because of the contamination of those soil. Lead, I mentioned to you a while ago that can cause the Parkinson's and the Lewy body. These are, uh, years ago we had those paints in our house that has all this lead, but there's also some other causes or sources of the lead. Mercury, this is another big one and more common one too. We can get this mercury from eating large predator fish. 
It could be tuna, which almost everybody likes tuna. It can be also swordfish, uh, king mackerel, groupers. Also, a lot of people like groupers. But aside from those large fish, this can also be acquired from those dental fillings, your amalgam. Even if your amalgam has been removed already, you, want, you might want to have it tested. You might want to have yourself tested. Because sometimes it gets removed, it's no longer in your mouth, but your mercury level is still inside you. Uh, this is another environmental toxin that gets a slide of its own because this is a very common one. We see this more often. This is a common cause of Alzheimer's disease and those people that has this toxin, they decline fast. But once treated though, the recovery is good. I also want to point out to you that this type of toxin out there Conventional medicine doesn't treat for this, and they don't also test. They don't test and they don't treat, okay? But, and if most of the symptoms that we have, sometimes they would just diagnose you with some other things, but it's actually caused by mold. So, knowing all those are the causes of Alzheimer's disease, if there would be a perfect drug, that would address all of these causes. There are several medications out there right now being prescribed to cognitive decline. Donepezil, Mimantin, all this imab, imab, you know, those biologics. They focus more on this amyloid flax. If you remember a while ago, I mentioned to you about those amyloid protein. That amyloid protein is part of our immune system in our brain. So amyloid flax is not a cause of Alzheimer's disease. So you don't want to move, remove that. It is a sign of Alzheimer's disease. Okay, this is now the fun part. We're going to be talking now about uh, how we can prevent and reverse cognitive decline. So this first slide here is more of a diet modification. We would like you to start eating the ones in the left and remove the ones in the right, the good ones, right? I want you to start eating more of this phytonutrients, vegetables, whole foods, and remove those processed, sugary foods and drinks. There's a lot of them. There's always in our advertisement in the TV. That's why they want you to keep on eating that. <laughs> Exercise is another important thing here to help maintain our, uh, of a healthy brain. If we keep on moving, regular movement that helps those, that keeps those heart rate up, you're gonna help improve the circulation, the oxygenation to your brain, and also increase those helpful chemicals in our brain that will help improve our cognition. Brain stimulation, this is another way of exercising your brain to improve this cognition. Brain HQ, you can purchase that online. Most of the people that I work with, they find this very helpful. Sleep. I bet you're gonna be telling me right now that you have also a problem with sleeping. But sleep is a really important for our brain health. Yeah, during, just the, during the time that we're, we're having our deep sleep, our brain is actually repairing, cleaning itself. So it is important to know that if you have a broken sleep, that process of cleaning and repairing is interrupted. So we really have to have uh, good sleep hygiene to help improve our cognition. All right, so cognoscopy. I am inviting you all to undergo a cognoscopy so we will be able to know what are your risk factors. This is our diagnostic tool 
and this consists of uh, cognitive, impair, uh, cognitive testing. Um, we're going to be doing also history taking, and we're also going to do a diagnostic test. And once we gather them, all this information together, we will be able to put together a comprehensive treatment plan just specific to your needs. Not every individual has the same causes again. So um, just to uh, show you here, this is a sample of our treatment plan. These ones here are the causes that we identified uh, that causing your cognitive decline. These ones here are the ways we address the cause. These are our treatments. And these are the research that is related to this treatment. Oh, patient testimonials. I just want to share with you some of our patient testimonials here. This first person is a 67 year old, very healthy individual. He went through, he underwent, uh, he undergone our, um, our program just for preventive care, did all the lifestyle, and um, improved his quality of life. The second one here was just happy that we treated this person as a human being, not as a patient. The other ones here too is that they're happy that we're able to provide other than pharmaceutical treatments. This is my last slide. I just want to show you that we track your progress. Every individual is different. Some of us will improve fast. Some of us will just take our time to improve. But if you stick with the program, I assure you that you will all improve. Whether it's a fast, or slow. Everybody improves. Thank you.